talks about strong, epic things, epic good. And uh, he teaches this young man how to, to be a hero, I guess, which is kind of cool. So I, I really enjoy it. I, I love, you know, speaking like that. <laughs> Master Jim! <laughs> Master Jim! <laughs> yeah, how many times have you said Master Jim? Right? Uh, there's yeah, about several hundred at this point. <laughs> <time. laughs> you know, but yeah, but uh, the first session is where we found it. Yes. When you, we were, well, how was, and then he said, Master Jim, that yeah. was it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Ronaldito. I, I lost, I lost my voice playing Bular, so I won't say anything. <laughs> Ron, by the way, he's, I'm fat, right? He's not very tall. <laughs> Make it, get up, get up. No, I want to make this demonstration. <laughs> Not, he's not that tall. Not that tall. He has stature. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Charlie, uh, Toby gets some of the best lines, but he's also pretty vital just kind of to keep Jim grounded to kind of keep us in this high school world. Yeah, Toby is the loyal confidant uh, that Jim needs. He is the best friend. He is also the disciplinary coach when he needs to be to kind of keep his best buddy in check. Um, but yeah, Toby loves Jim and he will have his best interest in him at the forefront always. So that may not be what Jim wants, but it's what he needs. And so that's, Toby's got a good gauge of that. What do you relate to most about him as a character? Because I feel like there is kind of something that is a little bit of Toby inside all of There is definitely a, a bit of Toby. Um, it's the, the, the wanting to take care of your friends. And you know, I, I feel like I'm a loyal friend, at least I hope I am. Um, and just the fact that he is just so sweet and sincere and even in the darkest moments and the scariest fights of battle, Toby always has a movie quote that he can reference or a little quip that he can remember and so I've always, I've, I've related to that because I don't like conflict, it's not, it's not one of my expertise. And how does it feel to kind of be the embodiment of Guillermo as a child, as he said in the beginning? It is insanely humbling and wonderful and such an incredible character that I'm absolutely honored to be able to play. And Toby, Toby, Toby is very confident on himself, which I love. I wasn't. Toby thinks he's James Bond. He does. He thinks he's very suave. He thinks yeah. he's Don Juan. He thinks he's James Bond. He thinks he's all these things. Yeah. Uh, well, he definitely is not. <laughs> and he has the pattern of the rock from The Shining as his coat. He does. <laughs> as his vest. Uh, well, Stephen, you're... Uh... For a little known show that no one here has heard of and we won't speak of at all. That's the next panel. Stow it, stow it for a while. But um, Glenn is kind of, you know, he's an honorable, very grounded character, whereas Steve is not seemingly no. a very honorable, nice, charming um, character. Honestly, this is. Uh, I love this role so much. Thank you for letting me play this role. Um, when I, I think when they uh, said um, they would like to see you for this, uh, I think someone told me, and please say if it's true or not, but Gu they said, Guillermo saw you in that uh, weird pilot called Filthy Sexy Teens. And were you <laughs> I played a strange character. Look it up. It's very strange. Um, and that was what he saw me, and he was like, "I would love for you to do something like that in there." Uh, and when I walked into the room and I saw the mock-up of the person that I was playing, it was this tall, blonde-haired bully, and I was like, "I'm totally fired. <laughs> totally fired." Um, but I've had such a blast uh, playing something that typically people don't let me play. So um, I've, I've tapped my inner bully and I've just been stuffing kids and- Go bigger, honestly. And, and in a way that maybe it wouldn't, it wouldn't seem natural if you were performing the role. So uh, animation is just a place to go a little bit uh, crazier, I think, tell stories a little bit bigger. I mean, they are usually about things that are 
uh, uh, the, the, the larger themes in life, good versus evil, uh, love, true romantic love, uh, sacrifice, the big values that you know we talk about uh, only comfortably in superhero settings now. Used to be in religion, but you know, now that's, that's sort of gone. Uh, but uh, animation is, is for big subjects and for big heart, and I think uh, that's Desmond, do you have to tell us? As big like as uh, this check would no, take. I, you know, and I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that his character was supposed to be you. I think it's it's really quite, an idealized version. It's very okay. charming. I mean, it's really charming that that's a representation of your youth. I just find it really funny. Um, I'm sad, but uh, it, no, 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 no. but. Um, Language is like the first thing we do. It's one of, you know, it's one of our greatest uh, things about being human is we need to communicate. So if you use your voice for that, it's it's, it's a great and glorious thing to be able to do. There you go. Follow that up, Ron. I, I'm just going to say everything Kelsey just said. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, I like I like to work without pants. So uh, <laughs> they don't they don't usually let me do that in movies. Only in voiceover. Know, when um, but in a in a in a, in a voiceover booth, just like <laughs> have at it, Ron. <laughs> uh, and the other thing is is that you know the, there's there's no discussion. Uh, there's not a lot of there's no rehearsals. There's no there's not a lot of. Uh, you know, sitting around the campfire and analyzing, you, you know, what it is we're trying to do. You, you walk into the studio and you need to be prepared to just go straight for the gold. And um, I, I, I prefer to, because you're working on a very, very primal, instinctive level that way. You, you see it, you, you have a, a, a glimpse of the sketch that, of, the, of the, whatever it is you're playing. And then you see the words, and then boom, it's performance time. And uh, um, for somebody who's ADHD like I am, it's, it's perfect. Uh, no, no, I didn't mean to uh, bring my personal yeah, life into yeah, it. Yeah, heard anybody <laughs> But I think can't I got, say anything you know, I'm running low on some of my medication. Right now. I think there are some people here that can help you with that. Uh, <laughs> Um, for me, personally, uh, the hours are a lot easier doing an animated <laughs> show. Uh, when you're filming a TV show or a movie, you're shooting for 12 to 14 hours a day, sometimes five days a week. Uh, when I would record Troll Hunters, I would go in and record maybe three episodes in two and a half hours or something crazy like that. I think uh, by the end of it, we mapped out, I was recording like one line a minute or something pretty cool. And then, uh, like Ron said, I like to wear basketball shorts and no shoes when I work, yeah. so it's kind of hard to do that on a set. Um, I, I love voiceover. I get to, I get to play a bully. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs>